Okay, so let's just say that the um, prior, the intent of this movie is the message saying that the um, inspirations and community built in youth, so in this case, the Crypt Camp, Camp Jened, um, can lead to a bigger momentums later on, um, world-changing results. So because these um, people created this community at Camp Jened, they were later able to um, protest and fight for their rights, which resulted in the ADA. Um, so if that is the intent of the movie, how do we think the movie should be structured to reflect that? Well, I have an opinion on that. You mm-hmm. push all the Camp Jened um, towards the back end of the film, okay? Because if you're saying that this is what Camp Jened did, then I need to know what life was like before Camp Jened. I need to know, okay, so if this was the impetus that led to this, then what was life like before that? You know, before the Big Bang, what was out there, right? So in order for that to be the case, I would push that back and build into it via a couple of characters, you know, that we can follow, learn about their struggles along the way, maybe learn about the laws. You build up to Camp Jened, um, you know, uh, it depends on the story. So you can't just say right here is where we're going to start this point of, uh, uh, of uh, introducing the camp and the people behind the camp. Um, and then you give some room uh, at the end, the last third, um, to see how these people, how it's actually affected, right? You know, by the people who decided to have a strong voice um, and um, protest people who pushed forward and passed laws, people who went out and got jobs or an education, uh, and it was all because of this camp. You know, so initial, so that's why I'm saying that's why I'm struggling, because if that's the intent, then the structure I see here just doesn't quite work for me. Mm-hmm. But what if in reality the Camp Janet didn't have that much of a power, so they couldn't take all those credit? Well, then that wouldn't be the intent of the movie, and you wouldn't call it Crip Camp. Yeah, I think that you are right, but um, Crip Camp could also be like, I don't know, just like a metaphorical thing for like a community of um, crippled people. It's just like referring to not necessarily the Camp Janet, but like the whole concept of community. That's why they add the, uh, oh, in the title, they also added oh, a disability revolution. If they wanted to necessarily tie it back to Camp Janet, they could just call it like Camp Janet, a disability, or the start of a disability revolution. But they didn't want, they in reality, it didn't happen that way. And we discussed it earlier. So I think they couldn't necessarily structure the movie like you planned because. Well, why couldn't they put the camp later? Um. Yeah, probably they could. I still like some parts that they try to save some of the footage from the camp for later. But it happened only in case of one character. Do you remember the character of the Steve? He was one of the people who later we saw him um, as like now someone, as a disabled person now who is able to uh, express his sexuality and be part of a kind of like a drag show. So... Yeah, he was like dancing or something. Yeah, like that. and they saved the part of the camp Janet that he is talking about. Oh, um, he he doesn't like this part of being disabled because he thinks that he's a passive. He doesn't like being passive, so he wants to take control. So I like that they save some parts of the earlier footage to tie back to later stuff but it was just like a mild thing so then if they did that with that one small instance would it have been more impactful i do it with more i think that in the case of like at least judy character it could be a worthwhile thing because in the beginning we saw judy as this person at the camp who is now valuing everyone's opinion and tries to um yeah, like we didn't know Judy would become so yeah, so important. You so you don't pay... In the beginning, you don't necessarily pay attention to 
set up for the Judy character and you don't care that much. It's just like a very regular scene that she's talking about. She's trying to ask uh, children to vote for what type of food they want. So it's just like something like necessarily, uh, you know, important in the eyes of the viewer. But I wonder if they no. could... Oh, I'm sorry, but so I have another thought then to answer your question. How would you uh, structure it differently? Here's an alternative too. So if if the intent is to show the impact of the camp, then instead of introducing later on, what you can do is spread it out so it's like 10%, mm -hmm. 10%, and 80% of it takes place in the camp. And then that would make sense to me to have these long... Um, sequences uncut unedited of just showing the the camp because yeah these long breathing moments right 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 so if if that is the intent is to highlight this camp then some of the people give me a little some of the people streamline it though don't give me like 10 15 people to keep track of my brain don't think like that give me like three people what was their life like before take me into the camp and then show me some slow changes with old footage of them in the camp and then what what they did with their life after the camp and in the last 10 10 percent of the movie or whatever so that's another way to stru structure it by living in the camp then mm -hmm. you know what i mean but that's where we go back to like the intent of it because i don't believe that that was necessarily their case then because mm -hmm. Because of the development, the build-up, the segues into other people that aren't involved in the camp, and then this movement and that movement, but then, you know, so, I don't know. I do think the camp, um, I liked all the, like, I, I, I did like all the long, dragged-out um, camp scenes um, where they were just, like, goofing around and stuff. Um, I guess the... The purpose of that, the I guess the, maybe the filmmakers were thinking, oh, this humanizes them. But I don't really think the beginning, having it all compacted into the beginning is really the best place. Um, well, it, it's it's the prudent place to humanize anyone. But I don't, for me, I wasn't getting humanized just being a fly on the wall of them sitting in a circle and talking with each other about i mean like i said in the beginning hopefully we still have that footage of us ta discussing this mm -hmm. you know i did learn some things you know it's like they're super intelligent thoughtful um um you know people and i just you know couldn't i just lacked the patience to sit and listen with a person with disability, especially if it affected their speech. And I just attributed to, well, maybe they're just a little slow. They're not slow. They're, you know, their physical speech has issues, mm -hmm. but it, their capacity is all there. So that was like something, you know, that, that, you know, that I learned and that had a brief thing, but the other 90% of floating around in the camp to me was just, you know, kind of lollygagging and not like, not enough of like what they did with Jimmy in the beginning to show images of him as a baby and, you know, growing up and telling stories about, you know, like, uh, you know, his struggles and interactions and misconceptions with people, mm -hmm. you know, so I get invested with him. But then that's not is that really the intent? Because he's jettisoned about a third of the way through for Judy. Mm -hmm. You yes. know what I mean? So that's why I'm just so confused. Like, what well, were you all trying to go with this from the from the get go? Like from mm -hmm. the beginning, like, what were you trying to do? You know, because I'll change my judgment depending, because, you know, maybe I fucked up and I, I, I didn't see where you're trying to take me, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm just so, like, heated, or not heated, I'm not heated at all, but that's why I'm so, like, animated with trying to figure it out, because now I'm confused. I think, um, so the, the, the group that was originally filming at the summer camp, um, because this was in, like, 1971. I'm trying to, like, place this... Um, and I'm trying to, like, compare this to other films I've seen from around the area that are um, anthropological films. Um, it's my, back, my educational background is in anthropology. Um, and it's actually, it's actually very similar to... What all, Indiana Jones does in all the movies. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a whip, too. It's the crazy part. Yeah, yeah, going after all of those treasures that are just 
sitting there, not in the dirt. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's actually um, very similar to a lot of the films that I've seen from um, that time. So maybe the the original filmmakers were just shooting in that observational style, um, and I like I'm I'm wondering like how much I I think I read in an article that they only filmed for like a week. So I'm wondering like how much footage the um, current filmmakers, um, the current people who put this film together recently, um, had to work with. Mm -hmm. See, but that's the other thing too. Like I can dig that too. Like, like a day in the life, a week in the life, a month in the life, Mm -hmm. right? There's a way to do that and have it be totally cool. But we did jump around and they did try and introduce other elements into it. Thus, I stand by some structural pacing issues for Mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I wanted to change my mind, but I'm just like, uh, I'm just not seeing it. Like, I mean, I think that could totally work. Give me a week in the life of whatever moment in time in history that you feel like is important. Mm -hmm. Like, I can dig that. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Ask these people. Yeah, hit yeah. that button. We want to hear from you. It's so easy. Mm-hmm. And you will not get disappointed. Yes. Please cut that last part. Yeah.